Hi everybody, uh, it's weekend, and um, but before I get to this weekend's topic, I need to make a correction from last week's video on, on who is the man of sin. Um, I spoke about Randy French. Now he's the guy who masters all of the audio CDs for Mike Williams Ministries and the Gospel Revolution. He's been doing it for a long time, many, many years. And um, I was talking about a phone call that Randy and I had because he called me um, about something he had read in Second Thessalonians, and um, so anyway, uh, uh, I, in in last week's video, it sounded like uh, this was an epiphany that Randy got um, about the man of sin being Jesus, and that 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 was a, a original uh, originally from Randy, and I have to correct that because. Randy heard that actually from a question and answer session from um, a series Mike had done years before that. And in the question and answer session, somebody asked Mike who the man of sin would be. And Mike responded that that had to be Jesus and, and he explained why. Um, so um, that, orig that original uh, epiphany about who was the man of sin, that came from a question and answer session years ago from Mike. So I wanted to clear that up, and so there's no misunderstanding. And now we can get to this week's topic. Hi, I want to talk to you today about the last days. Uh, it's a popular topic, um, very popular topic but among uh, the creature, the preachers, the creatures, the preachers that I grew up with, um, and was taught by originally, and um, it taught me about um, the end of the world, and that how is how in these modern days uh, the term is understood um, when people talk about or preach or teach or hear about last days, they think oh end of the world. And um, most of your uh, preachers nowadays who preach about the last days, they, they take most of their stuff, a majority of their stuff, from uh, three places in, the, in uh, Matthew, like Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, uh, and Luke. I'm trying to remember which one Luke was. Uh, Luke 21. And uh, those are very popular chapters when they teach on the last days. And because they they take things that Jesus said do during those times as the last days. But actually, the last days were always understood by the Jews to be the end of the covenant with Abraham. It would be the end of the old covenant. And um, so when the Jews were under the covenant of Abraham, which they believe they still are, uh, they believe that the last days are the end of that covenant. And they understand that that covenant will end. It will be completely over because there will be a new covenant. Now, in the Christian understanding of old covenant, new covenant, they believe the new covenant has come. Uh, but then they get a little messy because they read the old covenant and teach it as though it's also still in effect. And that was clearly not the understanding in the Old Testament scriptures. From Genesis, at the, the very first book of the Old Testament, all the way to the last book of the Old Testament in Micah, the last days are referred to. And it's understood in the writing and sometimes explicitly said that it is the last days of the covenant. That the covenant will end and a new covenant will begin, thus making that covenant with Abraham old. Uh, so here we can, we jump back into the Gospels and what Jesus said. And Jesus said he came to fulfill that old covenant. And the, and the references in the Old Testament to him coming, what he would do is he would fulfill it. He, and to fulfill means to complete and to end. And he said he came to do it. And he said he came to fulfill the scriptures in which the old covenant is contained. And he said he came not to destroy the law and the prophets, which he called the scriptures. He said he came to fulfill them both. 
And he also explained that you can't have one fulfilled unless everything is fulfilled, unless all of them are fulfilled, thus ending the Old Covenant. And that's what he came to do, and that was by his sacrifice. Now, a lot of your last days preachers who do grab from the Old Testament, one of their favorite things to grab is um, something known as the 70th, 70th week of Daniel. Now, these are prophecies about 70 weeks in the book of Daniel, and it says in the 70th week of Daniel that the Messiah would, uh, he would end uh, sins and all, and all iniquity iniquity he would put them to an end and sins is referring to transgressions of the old covenant law and iniquity is the sin of the world which everybody was imputed with because of the sin of Adam it says that when that Messiah would come he would do that now Jesus said he came and he came to fulfill all of that and it also says in the 70th week of Daniel that uh, he would put an end to all sacrifice. Now, that's referring to the old covenant requirements of sacrifices of bulls and goats uh, to cover sin. But Jesus didn't come to just end those. He came to end sin. And we even know that John the Baptist said, that, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away sin. So he didn't come to cover them. He came to take them away. And so Jesus did fulfill all of the last day's requirements. He fulfilled the old covenant. He ended the old covenant. He began the new covenant. It all happened at the cross. And we know even the writer of Hebrews says there is no more sacrifice. Why? Because he ended them, thus fulfilling the 70th week of Daniel. See, that's the hang-up with most of your end-timers today, is they don't believe the 70th week of Daniel has happened. They don't believe that sin has been taken away. And they use um, basically crimes in, in their, in, that, they, that they see going on in the world today, and they say there's still sin. Those actions and deeds were never evidence of sin. Sin was a spiritual thing. And the law pointed out that that sin was a condition and that it was a spiritual thing that we did not understand or have power over. Only God had power over it. And that was Jesus. So, sure, the crimes that we see happening in the world today that people think are sin, they would be sins against the old covenant law if it were still in effect and governing but they're not sins anymore. They're crimes. And, but they are not, in, in the eyes of God, sin whatsoever. So anyway, I just wanted to explain that we are not in the last days because the last days are the last days of the Old Covenant. Jesus came to end the Old Covenant, and he did at the cross. It's revolutionary when you consider all those other people talking about end times and last days. But it's true. Have a revolutionary week.